Hello, and thanks for clicking on this next Green Arculus production. Today, we're going to be talking about applications of right triangle trig. Okay, so we're going to be using angle of elevations, angle of depression. We're going to talk about bearing, and we're going to do it using Sokotoa uh, to actually go ahead and calculate our side lengths or angles, whatever it is that we need to find. Okay, so let's get started with some problems here. Uh, there are some things that you need to remember. Let's talk about the angles of elevation and depression. So what's important that you understand, we'll draw some pictures that you understand. The angle of elevation is an angle that's measured from a horizontal to a line of sight. So let's say that you had this building, okay, and there was somebody on the ground. Uh, there's a bug on the ground down here, and that bug, okay, was looking at the top of the building. So for the bug to look at the top of the building, well, let's see, we got that horizontal line. That would be the angle that they look at, right? They look up at. So this is the angle of elevation right here. The angle of elevation is measured from the horizontal line from the bug all the way up to the line of sight at the top of the building. This angle, theta, is the angle of elevation. Okay, now the one that's a little more complicated that people uh, get confused sometimes is the angle of depression, which actually has the same definition. It's the angle that's measured from the horizontal to the line of sight. But let's say that now the bug was on the top of the building. The bug was up here at the top of the building and the bug was looking down. Okay, so the bug's looking down at another bug that's at the bottom of the building. There's the other bug. All right. So now the angle of depression is the angle measured from the horizontal to the line of sight. So from the horizontal line of the bug, this bug up here. So from his horizontal line. So that's that phantom horizontal line you don't see. That's the angle of elevation or angle of depression. Okay, that's the angle of the depression. Now, keep in mind, just so you do understand, if we're trying to solve some problems, right, from shapes class, geometry, this angle and this angle down here, they're alternate interior angles, right? Because these are two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal. So this angle and this angle are actually equal to each other. So the angle of elevation, the angle of depression are actually, they represent the same angle. But when you're measuring or you're drawing a picture from and using the angle of depression, a lot of people mistake this angle for the angle of depression. This is not the angle of depression here. It has to be measured from a horizontal line. Okay. All right. So with that, let's try some problems. So we have a hot air balloon that's flying at 100 feet above the ground, and there's a person standing on the ground looking up toward the balloon. The angle of elevation from the person on the ground to the balloon is 47 degrees. How far is that person from the hot air balloon? Okay. All right. So let's see what we can do. Let's draw a picture. Here's a hot air balloon. I'm just going to draw a regular balloon. There's a regular balloon, hot air balloon, up in the air. It's 100 feet above the ground. There's a person over here. Here they are. They're smaller than the balloon, apparently. Okay. And the angle of elevation from the person on the ground to the balloon is 47 degrees. So there, from the horizontal up to the line of sight, is 47 degrees. Okay. The question on the table is, how far is that person on the ground? How far is that person from the hot air balloon? Okay. All right. So um, this question is not very specific. It needs to be more specific. Okay. Because we don't know if we want the horizontal distance to the balloon or literally from this person up to the balloon. We are going to find the horizontal distance. Okay. We'll assume that it's the horizontal distance. But again, if it were, you were going to take an assessment or something like that, uh, it would have to be much more specific so that you really know which side to label your X on. Okay. All right. So now we have 47 degrees. We have two sides that are labeled 
and one of them are unknown. So we are going to go ahead and take a look at Sokotoa again. Here we go. So we have from the 47 degrees, we have the opposite side and then we have the adjacent side. So that's tangent. So let's set it up. Tangent of 47 degrees is equal to opposite 100 over adjacent x. And now we want to solve for x. Okay, so you can't solve for x when it's in the denominator. So let's multiply by it and get it back in the numerator. So we have x tangent 47 degrees equals 100. We're going to divide both sides by the tangent of 47 degrees because that's a number. Okay, we can literally type it in the calculator and see what it is. All right, x is 100 divided by tan 47 degrees. So let's come over here to our calculator. Uh, we are going to type, oh, nope, let's take a look first. We're in radian mode. So let's go back, hit the mode key. Uh, we're going to have to push the down arrow a couple times and then the right arrow and then enter to end up in degree mode. Second and then quit to go back. And we are going to type 100 uh, divided by, it was tan 47. Okay, so we're going to type tan 47. Close it out, push enter, and we get 93.3. We'll round it. Okay, 93.3 feet. And that's our answer. All right. Okay, let's take a look at this next one here. <clears throat> a person is standing on the top of the building looking at a car on the ground. So here's the building. Here's the car. There we go. The person's up here somewhere. There they are. Looking at the car on the ground. The car is 400 feet from the base of the building. 400 feet. The angle of depression from the person to the car is 31 degrees. So... The angle of depression from the line of sight of that person down to the car. This angle from the line of sight down to the car is 31 degrees. I want to figure out how tall the building is. Okay, so now what do I want to know? That. I want to know how tall that building is. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can take the 31 degrees. Put it down here because it's alternate interior to the 31 degrees that's there. It's two parallel lines cut by transversal. Or you can just do all the calculations with this triangle instead. It doesn't make a difference. So I just tend to do it with the other triangle that's up here. The 31 degrees is already there. This is the side I want to find, right? That's the height of the building. And then the 400 is the horizontal side. Okay. So from the 31 degrees... We're going to use Sokotoa again. So from the 31 degrees, we have the opposite side and then the adjacent. So it's tangent again. So tangent of 31 degrees is equal to opposite X over adjacent 400. Multiply both sides by 400. Let's get X alone. We have 400 tan 31 degrees equals X. So let's go and figure that out in our calculator. We have 400 tangent, uh, what was it, 31 degrees? 31 degrees. So 31, we're still in degree mode. Close it out, push enter, and we have 240.3. 240.3, and that's our answer. We're all done with that. Feet. Now that's our answer. We're all done with it. Okay. Hopefully so far so good. All right. Now this one's a little more complicated. At the top of a building is a statue. Okay. So at the top of the building, there's a statue. Great. From street level, two observations are taken 400 feet from the building. So somebody's down here. 400 feet away, taking observations. The angle of elevation to the base of the statue is 45 degrees. So from this person's line of sight and the horizontal, it's 45 degrees. <clears throat> the angle of elevation to the top of the statue is 48.2 degrees. 
So from this person, from this horizontal line, to the line of sight up to the top of the statue, this whole angle from the horizontal to the line of sight is 48.2 degrees. The question is, how tall is the statue? Only the height of the statue. So we'll label it X. Okay, now the question is, how are we going to figure this out? We just want to know how much this piece is. All right, so hopefully if you take a look, you can see that there's actually two triangles in this picture. Let's draw them out. The first triangle is the smaller one. It has 400 degrees for the base. Then there's a right angle. Okay. It leads to the top of the building or the bottom of the statue. And then the angle of elevation is 45 degrees. And then there's another triangle here. Again, with 400 as its base, we'll draw it over here, 400. It includes the building and the whole statue. All of that here is 48.2 degrees. So I think what we can do is we want to know only how tall the statue is. Well, if we figure out this triangle, then we could figure out how tall the building is. And then if we figure out in this triangle, how far or how tall both of them are, the building and the statue together, and we subtract them, that would tell us how tall just the statue is. So let's do that. We're going to do that with some Sokotoa. Here we go. From the 45 degree angle, we have opposite and adjacent. So the tangent of 45 degrees is y over 400. We'll multiply both sides by 400. So that's 400 tan 45 equals y. Now I don't even need my calculator because I know that this is going to be one tangent of 45. Now you may not know that yet, but you will soon enough. So y is equal to 400 feet. And that actually makes sense. Okay, just so you understand from a geometry perspective, maybe you don't understand it from a trig perspective yet, but from a geometry perspective, this angle is 45 degrees. This is 90. 180 minus 90 is 90. 90 minus 45 is 45. That makes this angle 45. Okay, so the side across from the 45 degrees is 400. That means this side across from 45 degrees also has to be 400, right? Okay. These sides across from equal angles uh, have to be. So Y is 400. Now, this one I can't do in my head. So let's take a look. We have the tangent, right? It's going to be opposite and adjacent of 48.2 degrees is Z over 400. So I'm going to come over here. Z is 400 tangent 48.2 degrees. All right, so let's take a look. 400 tangent 48.2 degrees. Enter. 447.4. 447.4. Okay, so this whole thing is 447.4. So if we look at our big picture here, we want to know how tall the statue is. We know the whole thing, all the way up from the bottom to the top, is 447.4. We know this piece, oops, from the top of the building is 400. So that makes X 447.4 minus 400, which is 47.4. Four. That's how tall the statue is. Feet. Okay, there's our answer. All right, so you can use two triangles in one. You can soak it all a couple times to come up with another answer. All right, now let's talk about bearing. So this is something you maybe that you haven't worked with before. Maybe you have. Okay, bearing measures the acute angle 
a path or a line of sight makes with a north-south line. So imagine you're working on the coordinate plane. Okay, and we have north and we have south. All right, so bearing uh, in this class will be measured with two different directions and an angle in the middle. So, for example, let's try to draw the path or the line of sight for north 38 degrees east. So you are literally going to follow the directions that it says. From the north, from the north line, you are going to go 38 degrees toward the east. So we're going to make an angle that's from the north line, 38 degrees toward the east. And that's the line that I'm traveling on. Okay, this angle would be 38 degrees. All right. So let's try it again. Okay. When you measure bearing, the first direction is always north or south. The second direction is always east or west. Okay. And then the angle is in the middle. So let's try south. Uh, 60 five degrees east. So from the south, there's the east, from the south, I'm going to make an angle that's 65 degrees toward the east. And that's my line that I'm going to travel on. Okay. And then we'll try one with the west just for the heck of it. So let's go north, uh, 82 degrees to the west. So from the north, I'm going to move to the west, 82 degrees. From the north line, I'm going 82 degrees to the west. And again, that's the path that I'm traveling on. This angle is 82 degrees. You could find this angle, right? It's pretty easy. It's 8 degrees because these two angles together make 90. Okay, so you might need that. But that's how you draw a bearing angle, all right? Bearing is used for ships, it's used for planes, um, to give uh, somebody direction. Okay, so speaking of planes, an airplane is flying at 500 miles per hour and leaves the airport with a bearing north 52 degrees to the east. After two hours, how far north and how far east has the, train, has the plane traveled from the airport? Okay, so let's draw. From the north, we're going to go to the east. From the north, we're going to the east. 52 degrees. So from the north line, we are going to go 52 degrees toward the east. This is the direction or the heading that the plane is traveling on. It's headed that way. Okay? That angle is 52 degrees. Now the question is, well, the plane is all the way up to here now. So... The plane has traveled north, and the plane has also traveled east, right? It's traveled north, and it's traveled east. I want to know how far to the north and how far to the east. That makes a right angle, okay? Now, the plane is traveling at 500 miles per hour. That's how fast the plane is traveling. That's not how far it's traveled in this, on this line. But it says after two hours. So on this line, the plane has traveled 500 times 2. Distance equals rate times time. 1,000 miles. So the plane has traveled 1,000 miles on that line. 500 times 2. 1,000. Okay? So... Let's try to find N, and we'll try to find E. Let's start with N first. We're going to use Sokotoa again. So, from the 52 degrees, N, side N, is the adjacent side. The 1,000 is the hypotenuse across from the right angle. Adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. So, we're going to have the cosine of 52 degrees is N adjacent over 1,000 hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 1,000. We're going to have 1,000 cosine 52 degrees. 
is equal to n. So let's go figure out n. We have 1,000 cosine 52. Close it out. Push enter. 615.66, 615.7. So that's 615.7 miles, 615 mile, or 615.7 miles. That's miles. And now let's try the east. From the east, uh, we'll do from 52. So from 52 degrees, we have the opposite. And then we have the hypotenuse. So that's going to be uh, sine. So we're going to have sine of 52 degrees is E over 1,000. Multiply both sides by 1,000. 1,000 sine 52 equals E. E comes out to be, uh, we have 1,000 sine 52. Close it out. Push enter. 788.01. So we're going to go with 788, 788 miles. Those are my two answers. Okay. So that's how we use the bearing. Again, the important thing is that the bearing angle is in the right place on that coordinate plane. All right, last one. A boat is 45 miles to the west and 30 miles south of a port. Okay, all right, so let's see. We're going to put the port here at the origin because that's the easiest place to put it. The boat is 45 miles to the west. So 45 miles to the west, and then it's 30 miles south. Here's the boat. There it is, 30 miles south. If the captain wants to sail to the port, what bearing should they take? All right, so to get back to the port, the boat should go this way, right? Should head that way. All right, now, here's the thing. Remember, we want to measure bearing. To measure bearing, you either measure from the north or south first, then to the east or west. So, what we want to find is the angle that would measure from the south. So, we already know that we want to know from the south, we want to go into the west. So our bearing, we already know, is south, some angle, to the west. From the south, go this way to the west. This is the angle that we want to know. But that's not inside our triangle. So there's a couple ways we can do this. We can redraw the right triangle down here. Uh, we could find this angle here that's inside the triangle and then subtract it from 90 because these two together will make a right angle. So it doesn't make a difference. I tell you what, let's do something different. Let's try to find this angle here. We'll call it Y. Okay, so we're going to use Sokotoa from Y. We have the opposite. There's our right angle. And then we have the adjacent. So that's going to be tangent. So tangent of Y is going to be opposite 30 over adjacent 45. Okay, but now we want the angle, so we're going to need the inverse tan. We're going to take the inverse tangent on both sides. So we want the inverse tan of 30 over 45. So y is going to be the inverse tan of 30 over 45. Okay, so let's come over here. And we're going to do, this could be a problem. Inverse tan of 30 over 45. Oops, let's try again. Inverse tan of 30 over 45. Uh, close it out. Push enter. And we get 33.69. So 33.7 degrees. 33.7 degrees. But that's all well and good. This is 33.7. But I don't care what this angle is. I want to know what this angle is. So to get X, I'm going to have to take 90 and subtract 33.7, which is going to be 56.3. So we know from the south, we're going to have to go 56.3 degrees toward the west. And that's the bearing that the captain should take. And that's the correct answer. Okay? And that's what we have for applications of right triangle trade.
And as always, thanks for clicking.